Uh, well, welcome to this PSN30 Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. These are tutorials that are supposed to be 30 seconds long. They always run longer. But we're going through all the features, all the tools, all the goodness of Photoshop. And today we're up to the Gradient Tool, one of the most heavily used tools in Photoshop, whether it's the actual Gradient Tool or the Gradient Editor or the Gradient Overlay with Layer Styles or using Gradients and Masks. You can use Gradients for so much in Photoshop. This is an absolutely essential tool uh, to use in Photoshop. Let's go over the Control Bar really quickly. If you hit the Gradient Panel, it brings up your Gradient Editor. We're going to touch on that in a second. If you select the dropdown, you can choose one of the preset Gradients. Quick tip, you can hit this little uh, fly out icon and choose a bunch of other types of gradients that Photoshop has like color harmonies one and choose to append it to your list and hey look at that I got a bunch more gradients to select from that's pretty cool um, I also have different styles of gradient the radial gradient it's just one color to the next black to white boom the radial I'm sorry this is the linear gradient the radial gradient is this one which is one color to the next but in a circular or radial pattern. We have the angle gradient, which is sort of this gradient that begins here and spins all the way around, bam, and seals together at the end. We have the reflective gradient, which is the gradient that is supposed to, well, you're going to see it looks just black to white here, but if I only do it half, it reflects the color of the gradient onto the bottom half as well. So it goes black to white one way and black to white the other way as well. And then the diamond gradient, which I don't use all that much, um, but it can be pretty cool if you use it correctly. Uh, you can do all kinds of neat things with it. Um, so those are different types of gradients. You have different color blend modes. So let's say I go multiply, which is only going to show the black. You can see with the diamond, I can start creating this crazy starburst effect, which is kind of cool because it's only really seeing the black that's being laid down. So you get different blend modes you can use. That's great. Opacity, that's, hey, do I only want the opacity of the gradient to be very, very, uh, well, do I want the gradient to be very difficult to see? See that? And we're just creating gradient after gradient, but only at 20% opacity. Reverse. Reverse just flips the colors of the gradient. So now the diamond, instead of being black, you're going to see is going to be white, and everything around it is going to be black. That can be very, very useful to quickly flip the color of the gradient instead of having to go into the gradient editor and drag your colors one way or the other. Great little feature. Dither. Uh, dither... It helps, well, as you can see the tooltip, it helps reduce banding. Sometimes when you're using the radial gradient in particular, um, you're going to see a lot of, and you're not really going to see it here. You can sort of see it if I zoom in. Sort of the bands of color. If I undo dither, maybe it'll be even easier to see it. Yeah, you can sort of see the color stepping. All right, you don't want to see that. Dither helps knock that down. I'm going to cover a little tip on how to really help get rid of that a little bit later on. And then transparency, I like to keep that ticked on at all times because if you use something like a foreground to transparent gradient, right, and we go just black to transparent, and you can see I'm just going black to transparent, not black to white. If I don't have transparency ticked on, it's just going to be solid black. So we don't want that. I leave transparency ticked on. There's really no reason, uh, at least in general, to have it shut off. So with all of that stuff in mind, how do I create a new gradient? Well, you come in here to the gradient editor. In this case, we've got the foreground to transparent set. So we don't get into transparency issues right now. I like to just select one that's two solid colors running betwixt each other or between each other. Wow, breaking out some Old Testament language there, aren't I? Uh, between two different color stops. You can select the bottom color stop, double click it, and choose a different color. So now we've got a kind of a very electric blue or just very saturated blue going to maybe a very saturated red and every color in between that, that takes. We can click anywhere else on the bottom beneath this gradient bar to add another color stop, double click on that, and choose to add another color right there in the middle. Now we've got a really ugly looking red, green, blue gradient. What are the color stops on the top for? Well, these are not color stops. These are transparency or opacity stops. You can reduce the opacity. So just like we had foreground to transparent, this gradient is now going to go solid blue to somewhat see-through green, fading into very transparent red. All right, so you can mess around with that. You can add multiple opacity stops as well. How do I get rid of a color stop? I'll just drag it off into the nether world, boom, and drop it anywhere. That's pretty cool. If you like your gradient, you can give it a name like like this one, and you can hit new, and it's going to save that gradient. That's cool. You can save out your gradient as a big gradient file, so you can load it into other versions of Photoshop, maybe share it with coworkers or other people on your team. You can load their gradients into Photoshop. Again, you can hit the little flyout menu. You can display gradients by, you know, large thumbnail, small thumbnail, now, whatever you want. But most importantly, you can do stuff like, hey, I want to use metal gradients. Appending, it just adds it to the list here. I'm going to go with this very silvery gradient. Hit OK. See, we can go with like a reflective gradient and just drag this straight up. You can see we have this very cool metal looking effect using angle and one of these metal gradients. That's pretty cool. And one of the other things we can do in here it, when we're creating a new gradient is we can choose not, or we can choose a different type of gradient. Not solid color maybe, but noise. You can see this is kind of crazy. We can introduce as much red, green, or blue into our little 
noise pattern as we want. We can restrict specific colors. Um, we can add transparency. I'm going to not do that. If you increase the roughness, it really starts to give you that old television-y look. If you reduce it, it starts to become more of a blended, uh, beautiful gradient, if you will. And then you hit randomize, and you just get lots of different random colors that you're going to get uh, with your noise gradient. So if we go with something like that, hit OK. I still have that angle gradient. Let's do the same kind of gradient. Just drag straight up and you can see we've got this, whoa, crazy looking effect. Or if we go with a radial gradient, it's going to be a crazy bands of color coming out of the middle, right? Or the reflect gradient, it's going to be like wild colors or just the straight linear gradient. Or maybe we want to drag the linear gradient on an angle. Oh, by the way, if you hold down the shift key while dragging out a gradient, you can strain it to go straight up and down or straight across or straight on a 45 degree angle things like that. That's pretty cool. Um, so now outside of that, I want to just show you quickly, we talked about the radial gradient. I'm going to go back to foreground to transparent. So I'm just dragging out a big black blob here above my metal gradient. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. And if we have a little bit of banding, which there's a very little bit, one of the ways you can even more reduce your banding, reduce it even more, beside taking on dither is you can go filter noise and just add a little bit of noise now one of the things you want to do when you add noise is number one don't add too much as I'm doing here make sure monochromatic is ticked on that's very very important and just reduce the amount maybe 10% maybe 10% is even too much maybe we want to go down to like 3.5% something like that hit okay so it's barely noticeable but it does an awful lot to help just blend those colors together you can hit commander control F one or two more times if you add a very little bit of noise and just watch how it blends the, that gradient together and helps reduce banding all together so the gradient tool in Photoshop did I miss any features of it that you love leave a comment below I hope you've learned something from this tutorial the gradient tool is so important to learn how to use you're going to use it all the time in Photoshop so for the gradient tool in Photoshop and for now that's it get it got it good NathanielDodsonTutVid.com I'll catch you in the next one